Howdy folks, and welcome back to War Thunder with the Mighty Jingles. A lot of you have been clamouring for a, another look, or a, or a slightly more detailed look, at the British Rank 16 bomber, the Avro Lancaster Mark III. Uh, and here it is, and I'm flying it in one of the new historical battles. This is uh, Sicily. I've actually been here, you know. That spot there, right over by Mount Vesuvius, I've sailed past that. It was a real pain in the ass because it's a very, 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 very busy shipping lane. And uh, the waters are fairly shallow. And so uh, you basically have to have uh, what they call Yankee patrols closed up at all times. And uh, what that means is it, it, there's a heightened risk of uh, collision in such a narrow and busy shipping channel. And, and to get through this channel takes like the best part of a day. So watertight condition Yankee is in force and you have what they call these Yankee patrols guys whose job is to patrol either the forward or the aft end of the ship checking that all the Yankee doors and hatches and valves are shut in the event of a collision just makes the ship more watertight and there is very very little in the Navy more boring than doing four-hour Yankee patrols <laughs> which literally just involves walking around the ship with a Samson bar checking the hatches are shut and uh. and of course when somebody goes through a Yankee hatch they never shut it after them because people are arseholes so you're constantly just walking around closing doors after people for four hours at a time oh immense fun join the Navy they said see the world they said it's a man's life they said <laughs> but enough about that crap here we go Lancaster bomber and I don't know if they've made this thing more durable. Because my previous experience of flying the Lancaster was lumber up to bombing altitude, find a whole bunch of ME262s and Focke Wolf 190s waiting for you and die in seconds. And it's not very well armed. It only has three turrets that one on the top, the one at the back, the one at the front. And they're only 7.7mm machine guns. And yet. My experience of driving this thing in the past was climb to bombing altitude, find all the enemy fighters already waiting for you and just die very, very quickly. But that just didn't happen in this one. Now the Lancaster is slow. And the problem is it's the first... Well, it's not the first proper bomber you get. You get Wellingtons all the way up the British bomber line, but there's a big old gap between the Mark 10 Wellington and this thing. You get this at rank 16. And this is a historical battle, so... There's no matchmaking in play here. And there is an ME262 on the enemy team. And I'm, I'm shitting bricks in case I run into this guy. But normally, you, you jump into an arcade battle in the Lancaster. Because it's rank 16, you are guaranteed... You're, you're guaranteed to come up against fighters that can basically be waiting for you. And, and you, cannot, you cannot get away from them. And you don't really have the defensive armament to fight them off. Or so I thought. Um, and they can they can just rip you apart. In historical battles, it's pretty much a it's a lottery. It's a throw of the dice. As I said, as it happens in this game, there were plenty of BF one and nine Ks. There were plenty of uh, well, there was one ME two six two. So I'm hooking right along through. I think it's the Straits of Messina they call it. Climbing, getting into the clouds, and oh, the two six two is going low after the bow fighters. Our team was destined to fail horribly in that we, we had HE-51s Gloucester Gladiators <laughs> they had BF-109 Ks <laughs> there was a Meteor on our team but he dies pretty quick so I've climbed up I'm getting into the clouds I think I suffered a water overheating failure on one of my engines and there look at that just three Mark 1 Gladiators <laughs> We are so losing this one. Oh, God. 
But I didn't hate flying the, the Lancaster in this one. This is probably the best I've ever done in a Lancaster. Now, due to the nature of this thing being so incredibly slow, it takes a long time to get to the target. So we're going to skip ahead to when I first uh, get within bomb dropping range. So we're not far away from that medium tank column. And the thing about level bombers, medium and heavy bombers, is trying to hit a moving target from three, four kilometres up is, well, it's a skill I haven't quite acquired yet. And it's, a, it's harder in historical battles because the aircraft, you don't have the virtual... Well, there are some elements of the virtual instructor at play, but... You, you don't have the virtual instructor trimming the aircraft and, and it's much harder to maintain a steady approach angle. Angle? Steady line of approach. Sitting here in the bomb site view and I just... It's so easy to overcorrect. But amazingly, Well, kind of the look of the draw, really. If we'd had... And look at that. <laughs> look at how many of us are left. Unbelievably, some of the gladiators are still flying. And my only real hope at this point is that the enemy team are so low on ammunition from just kicking everybody else to death <laughs> that, that when they do come up to find me, they're not going to have the ammunition to shoot me down. And I really do suck at high-altitude bombing. Although one thing I've... maybe it's... I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe you guys have experienced the same, is that lately um, the amount of drift and variation in where your bombs go when you're dropping them at high altitude like this, you can miss a target. You can miss the aim point by the length of a football pitch. Maybe it's... maybe it's not me. Maybe I don't suck at bombing as much as I thought I did. Maybe it's just the amount of drift that they've uh, put into the bomb dropping process. But with 14 of these 500 pound bombs, I should have been able to do a lot better than this. And yeah, you can see I'm, I'm just lumbering all over the sky. It's so easy in historical battle with, with an aircraft as big and unresponsive as this. Well, it's easy in any kind of bomber unless you get down low to the ground, which just makes you easier prey for the fighters. Um, trying to hit something with the bombs from this height is, is, is not easy more so in historical battles because the slightest movement of the controls and this thing just lurches all over the bloody sky especially when you're in that bomb site view you don't have any real visual representation other than the attitude indicator in the head up display of how far the aircraft's pitching over it's so easy to overcompensate and just zoom right off to the left or right of where you intend to actually go and it's one of those things you know it, practice makes perfect. If you want to guarantee hits of the ground targets, um, go low. Bomb them from 400 feet up. If you want to attempt to stay safe, get above the clouds and get better at high altitude bombing. And yeah, I don't have a problem with that. So, a couple of bombs left. What am I going to drop them on? Nope, not going to drop them on any of them. Already messed up my approach. And I had a bit of a, oh my god, oh my god, oh, oh it's just flak. <laughs> I thought, no, it's an ME262. I had a look around, no, actually, it's just flak. I'm fine. I will say one thing. I don't know what they've done about the AI on flak. I was playing, um, I don't know the name of the map. It's one of the new Pacific um, Ground Strike maps. I can't remember what it's called. And uh, I was playing a historical battle on the weekend with HB Origin and Fly Daily and the guys from the Saturday Night Livestream and um, of the eight aircraft that we had seven of them got shot down by flat gunners from enemy destroyers and not... oh crap oh I'm in trouble now 
Oh, it's the ME262. Oh no, there's another one. Somebody else over there. Oh, it's a BF 109K. Oh, I'm so dead. Well, they haven't hit me yet. But okay, be my big mouth. Oh, I'm hitting him. Now this tail gun, they are only 7.7mm machine guns, but there's four of them. And boom, look at that. I'm crippled already. And yet, in previous experience of flying this thing, I'd have been shot down by now. So this was actually quite encouraging. And I've hit this fella a few times. In fact, more than a few times. I don't know what kind of damage I've caused to him, though. Now, the thing about going into gun of you like this and these bombers, uh, you do get a lot, I mean a lot, of ammunition. But it takes forever to reload when you run out. And because the Lancaster only has three gunners, and none of them can shoot underneath the aircraft, that's the way to come up on a Lancaster. Come up from be behind and at least 30 degrees below him, and he just can't hit you. And you can take them apart at your leisure. I'm trying to lose these guys in the clouds. And I'm the only one left flying. Yay! <laughs> no. Oh, God, I need to get home. Oh, I've still got three couple of bombs left. Or have I? No. No. No bombs. They're gone. I need to get back. So there's me in a Lancaster bomber against six enemy fighters. This was never going to end well, and I'm already critically damaged. Actually, you know, thinking back to that uh, that score screen, three Mark 1 Gloucester uh, gladiators that we had were AI. And you don't see this too often in historical battles, but sometimes there just aren't enough people queuing up. So those HE-51s, the enemy team had, and our gladiators were all AI. There's just not enough people queuing up for the historical battles. Speaking of AI, as well as that BF-109, I also picked up an AI fighter tail. The BF-109 on the other hand, oh, you know, oh, he's going to give me serious problems. And look at the battering this Lancaster takes. There's more daylight than, than plane showing through the wings. <laughs> the damage I've taken is going to make it real, real hard to land this thing. And I'm really not, really not too sure about the tail guns on this thing. You can see the amount of lead I'm having to put into the guys on my tail. It does have four guns in the tail, but they're not very big. They're just 7.7mm guns, and you have to put a... Fer oh crap, I picked up another one. That looked like 30mm cannon fire. Does that mean the 262's on me as well? Oh no, there's three of them. Three or four of them. Oh. oh, there's another AI turned up. Is that AI? Hard to tell. Yep, it is. And there's some cannon fire coming in from the other side. Here's that BF-109 again. Oh, I got him! <laughs> yes! And full respect to that BF-109 pilot, he could have easily thought, Oh, I'm dead anyway, I'll just ram him. And he, he did everything he possibly could to avoid flying into me. So there's an honourable pilot. Don't often see that. Oh, and another one. And these are... Oh, well, I was going to say... The, that's one proper... That's one AI kill, which is, you know... Fine. This one isn't. That 262 is probably very, very low on ammo. The BF 110 isn't, and he's got a lot of 20mm cannons in his nose. But I'm hitting him. I'm hitting the little bugger. And the BF 110 is a lot easier to shoot down than these 109s. Oh crap. And again. I don't know how the hell I've managed to drop my landing gear. <laughs> 
but again that guy could so easily have chosen to ram me and he just he just didn't do it and I've shot him down and I think the 262 is out of ammo but look at the amount of damage this thing sustained and you know this this is a very very welcome change of pace because I'm just so used to this thing falling out of the sky the second somebody even looks at it I don't know if they've buffed the damage model of the thing or, or I just got incredibly lucky but I mean the plane is wrecked I've lost the ailerons on one wing completely my elevators are shot to bits the airframe is riddled with holes I suspect you're going to have an easier time of it if you want to fly bombers going up the American line because you get that first B-17 at rank 13 three ranks before this thing and 13 is pretty high but it's got three times the amount of guns that this thing has and they're all 50 calibre and you're not going to get into you know, and you're still going to get into games with with jets occasionally and you know BF109 G6s and Focke-Wulf 190s all the time but you're not going to get into as high level games as you do with the Lancaster all the time and and the B17 is a tougher aircraft and it's better able to look after itself so if you're into your bombing I the Russian year twos because they're fast and the B17s because they're tough and they're very, very well armed and capable of looking after themselves. The, the Lancaster, they've definitely done something to the damage model of this thing. It is definitely much, much harder to shoot down than it used to be. I mean, it was criminally easy to shoot down before. And I'm reloading, so I can't actually shoot this guy down, unfortunately. Would have been a nice additional kill. But, hey, three air kills. I've done... My bombing sucked. I think I only took down six ground targets. But I managed to get more air kills in a Lancaster bomber than the rest of my team. <laughs> And I'm never going to be able to land this thing now. Oh, gun's back up. Come on, give me a fourth air kill. He's only AI, but a kill's a kill. Points make prizes. And strangely enough, the AI seem to understand the best way to avoid getting shot at by a Lancaster better than the uh, <laughs> better than the players did. Stay below him. Or perhaps he just didn't have the climb to reach me. I don't know. I'm about to lose an engine. My airframe is shot to crap. I don't know, I can't even remember which way my, my airbase is. Let's check the map. Oh, where am I going? I'm four kilometres up. I'm <laughs> I am... Um, look at that. Look at that damage this thing's taken. There's the airbase. Right. I'm amazed I was even able to turn this thing around. Look at that. One wing... The wings are barely holding on. The, I've lost the ailerons on one wing. This engine... The, that um, port outer engine is about to shut down and overheat. Elevators are shot to crap. Very, very impressed with the beating this thing managed to take. Of course, it might be different in arcade where it's a lot easier to aim. None of these fighters get target lead indicators. They have to use the old Mark 1 eyeball to judge where to uh, lead their shots by. So it is easier to survive. It's not easy, but it's easier to survive when you're flying a bomber in a historical battle. And that MC200 still hasn't given up. The ME262 has obviously run out of ammo. He's gone back to land and we are. Am I going to be able to put this thing down? Let's have a go. It would be nice if I could land it and repair it. Because these things cost a lot to repair. You wreck one of these things in historical battles, it will cost you 65,000 credits to repair it. And again, that's another incentive for flying the American heavy bombers. There goes the port outer engine. Because a rank 13 B-17, well, I don't know, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't have any B-17s, so would 
a B-17 be cheaper? A Rank 13 B-17 be cheaper to repair than a Rank 16 Lancaster? Logically, you'd think it would, but you look at some of the uh, the values of the of the aircraft. I mean, the Rank 9 Thunderbolt just there was no rhyme or reason to how much that thing cost to repair. So much more than aircraft higher tier than it. We, we shall see. It wouldn't surprise me if the B-17 actually ended up being just as expensive as these things to repair, because I think it's a more capable aircraft. But no matter which way you cut it, 65,000 credit repair bill for a fully destroyed aircraft in historical battle, you, you need to do very, very, very well indeed, even in a historical battle, to turn any kind of a profit. Have I done well enough? Uh, three so far, six ground kills, three air kills, we shall see. Come on. Nah, I just can't put this guy down. The only thing holding that aircraft together is spit and bailing wire, but I'm in the same position. Oh, if I could just land and repair this thing. There's no way I'm going up again. <laughs> <laughs> just, no. I'll just land, repair, and exit. You know, concede this game. But, landing, yeah. First I have to actually land the thing. And, it's wallowing around, rolling from side to side, and I, and right at this point, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't roll, I couldn't, I couldn't correct this roll. I'm I'm standing on the rudders and nothing's happening. I'm trying to roll it slightly over the port and nothing's happening. And uh, I'm going to have to land it on the... I'm going to have to try to put it down. I'm, I'm not going to hit the runway. And I need to get it down quickly before this roll to starboard becomes more pronounced. It's not going to happen, is it? Look at that. There's just no way I'm going to walk away from this land. And, no. Bang. <laughs> <sighs> but very, 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 very impressed with how much of a beating this thing can take now. Even if my bombing and landing damaged aircraft skills completely suck. And there we go. Our team has now run out of all aircraft. Enemy team wins. And the fighter and the bomber award. <laughs> In an Avro Lancaster. Alright, the bomber award I can understand and should expect, despite the fact that I only killed, yep, six ground targets, but I got three air kills. <laughs> Alright, two of them were AI, but an air kill's an air kill. And, nope. Now, luckily I'm still running on free repairs on the Lancaster. I still have four left, but there you go. Just over 60,000 credits earned. With a premium account, I hasten to add. So, and if we have a look, we will see that it's 65,000 credits to repair this thing. So, if I was just a little bit better at bombing, I would have probably made a profit. Well, I would certainly have made a profit on that one, but not today, Josephine. So there you go, the Avro Lancaster in historical battles. Um, it's It seems to be a lot better than I remember it being. And, and that's purely just down to the damage model. It seems to be able to take much more convincing beating, much more of the beating that you would expect a heavy bomber to be able to take. So that's good news. Um, and I'm looking forward to flying this thing, at least as long as my uh, free repairs hold out, because it's going to take like a week to repair this thing if I try to repair it for free. So we shall see how that goes. But anyway, there you go. Uh, Avro Lancaster bomber. A lot of you have been asking to see this thing in action in the Sicilian historical battle against the Luftwaffe. Watch your six, guys. I'll catch you next time.